apologize for the late invite. A little bit late. So my name is Maria Wake. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the Director of Community Engagement for the City of Boise. We're going to start this morning with remarks from Mayor McLean, followed by Council President Pro Tem Holly Woodings, um, Interim Police Chief Ron Weinecker, and Corporal Brian Holland, um, the IBOP Local 486 PIO. Um, then I'll come back up, facilitate a few um, question and answer, so be thinking about what quite follow-up questions that you might have. We don't have a ton of time for those, but we'd like to have a to um, so that. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Um, as Maria mentioned, I'm joined by our City Council, our Chief Weiniger, Deputy Chief Brooks, our BCD Community staff, thank you, um, and Union Leadership, and you'll hear from a few of them shortly. Um, as you know, our community last week was rocked by news um, that a retired Boise police officer has held an actively advanced racist and humanizing propaganda while serving as a sworn officer in the department. Now, I don't believe that those ideals are pervasive in our department, but the community must know, and we must know, what does exist and what's happening in the department. Because we owe it to our officers and the people of Boise to look at this. Our officers serve this community tirelessly and were eager to learn whether Matt Bringelson's ideology led to any discriminatory impact on our community members or within our police department in the various roles that he had. I made it clear last week that we would identify an independent investigator with deep experience in these kinds of investigations and the resources necessary to conduct the investigation as quickly and as transparently as possible. I have selected Michael Bromwich and his team at Steptoe and Johnson. This is a firm known for government investigations and enforcement. Michael is a former Inspector General of the Department of Justice. He is DOJ's principal oversight official responsible for investigating systemic issues and public corruption within DOJ and its law enforcement agencies. And most recently, he led an investigation into the Baltimore Police Department. I'll ask City Council to approve a contract next week, and the investigation will begin immediately thereafter. Michael and his team will investigate whether Matt Bringelson's stated racist beliefs impacted his policing during his employment, his on-duty interactions with the community, other officers or BPD staff, and whether any city resources were used to create or distribute racist material. And as I said last week, as have the folks with me here today, we need to know whether racist ideology has tainted policing, hiring and promotions, internal investigations, and community interactions in any way. Because it's one thing to hold a set of beliefs. I mean that. It is one thing to hold a set of beliefs. But it is an altogether different thing to allow those beliefs to impact the behaviors, to impact your fellow officers, to impact the community, and that's what we have to be able to determine and then share with the community. Once the investigation is final, and we'll know more about the timeline once it has started, a comprehensive report will be presented to the City Council in a public setting um, during a live meeting and, and, of course, made available for public review. And I know I speak for everyone in saying that I look forward to a quick and also a very thorough investigation and a set of recommendations that we can effectively um, put this issue to rest and move forward with a better, stronger police department um, and restore trust with the community. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Holly Woodings, President Pro Tem of Boise City Council and also the Public Safety Liaison for City, City Council. Council. And speaking on behalf of City Council, we look forward to the opportunity to approve this contract next week and begin the work of determining whether or not Ringelson is unique in his stated racist views and whether that led to actions that negatively impacted the department and our community. We have a lot of good folks in the department. They show up day in and day out, and many were as shocked and horrified as we were to learn of Ringelson's views and the language, and the language he shared freely. And still they show up for duty every day to keep our community safe. They, like us, need to know how deeply this runs in the department and be able to put the issue to rest. Thank you.
Good morning. It's good to be with you this morning, though these have not been easy days. They've been some tough days. But I would echo many of the sentiments and statements of the mayor and council president, Pro Tem Woodings. There is no room in the Boise Police Department for those who allow racist or white supremacist views to negatively impact policing in our community. We stand ready to support the investigation by fully providing the investigator and his team with access to the documents, data, and interviews necessary to be thorough. We support the idea of an independent investigation as we too want to get to the bottom of these questions that many have. In the meantime, I personally assure you that our police officers and staff continue to work every day and every night to serve our residents and keep our community safe. We will, in fact, come out of this stronger and we welcome uh, an expedient resolution to this matter. Thank you. Uh, hello, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor, uh, City Council members, uh, Council Member Woodings, and uh, Chief Lonegan. Uh, I am uh, Brian Holland, Local Brian Holland. I'm with the uh, IBPO, Local 486 uh, Union. I represent uh, 240 sworn officers and sergeants uh, that go out every day and keep our community safe uh, and the trust of our, of our residents. Uh, we do not and cannot abide by uh, former captains' um, ideals. Uh, we have, do not have those uh, ideals in our union members. Um, <clears throat> while we believe this is an isolated incident, uh, we're committed to the investigation uh, and getting, bottom to finding out, getting to the bottom of finding out uh, the negative impact, if there's a negative impact, uh, to the department and the community. Uh, we would like the utilization of an internal investigation. Uh, we believe there's offices designed for that. Uh, either way, our union members will continue to earn the Boiseans' trust uh, through policing ethically and professionally. Thank you. All right, now for the fun part. Um, thanks for joining us today. We do have time for a few questions. I promised them that we wouldn't keep them all morning. Um, so we need to be done by, uh, by 11. Um, we cannot speak on behalf of Steptoe and Johnson, the firm that has been chosen, but I do have contact information for um, anyone who wants it to be able to get in touch with them directly. Um, and we won't, throughout the course of the investigation, be able to speak to their work um, separately from them. So we'll look to you to be talking with them directly uh, with any questions. Um, if you have a question for a specific person, please let me know before you ask it, otherwise I will use my best judgment to figure out which of the four speakers your question is directed to. Which statistics are you referring to? Uh, the crime statistics with African American and people of non white race committing more heinous crime. Good. Um, that's a great question that I do not know the answer to, Chief. So I don't think we uh, are prepared today to address whether those statistics were accurate or not. We have certainly not done an analysis in relation to crimes committed in our community, but uh, we, we, would, we would hope that uh, folks can look at those statistics for themselves and draw their conclusions. Um, more importantly to us is the ideology that he espoused and and looking at whether or not those feelings or views that he has or had, uh, whether they impacted our policing and whether we had any disparate uh, policing uh, outcomes or measures in place because of uh, the views that he may have had. Ian. Yeah. 
You know, a decision was made related to management, and that decision stands. Um, we are looking at how we move forward, given the news that we learned the, uh, about the ideals that Captain Bringleson held. And this investigation will help us doing, do that by looking deeper into and the outcomes with it, both within the police department and the impact on the community. Yes, I'm happy to answer that question. The answer is, is no. I did not ever, in my experience and my time around uh, Captain Bringleson when he was an officer throughout the time that he served in the department, I never heard a comment or witnessed any action personally that uh, would lead me to believe that he held those views. We are currently settling the amount of the contract. It'll be a not to exceed amount. Um, and when we've announced now who we're working with, have talked with council, and on Friday, by Friday, when the council agenda is released, um, that contract and the amount will be in there. Has that been, I'm looking at my team, has that been finalized yet? No, it has not. I guess, you know, beyond that, beyond the cost of this, um, the reason that it hasn't been finalized is because we've been working with the department, with council, um, with the union um, on the scope that this investigation needs to take. And the step forward next is what's most important to us is that we are able to determine the impact, if there was an impact, on members in the community, on members of the department. Um, and the time that's estimated to do that well, to do that independently and transparently, so, and to provide our city with recommendations to prevent something like this, if we learn that there were true behavioral impacts on people, to prevent it from happening again, um, is what we're after. And so the negotiation with the firm um, will firm that up, and that's what we'll be able to release on Friday with the agenda. Why outside investigation? Sure. Um, as we looked at the tenure that this officer had in the department, the different positions that he held, um, the potential impact that we wanted to answer from an independent perspective of um, whether or not there was impact that could be linked to ideals, we need to look at oversight. Were there things that were missed? We need to look at um, policies, procedures, hiring practice, all, says all those different pieces within the department. And so we believe that it would be best for the community to, to trust the investigation. It would be most helpful for us as a city as we think about um, and learn from this the steps that we ought to take internal to the department to prevent this from happening again if there was impact. That the best way to do that would to have eyes on this um, completely independently from the city that has no pre-existing, someone and a team that has no relationship with the city um, that has experience in doing this um, to be able to then assure us that either it, w it had no impact or um, to provide for the community the steps that we ought to take um, as a city to prevent the impact from happening again. Sure. Um, it's the purpose of that office is to um, review cases, audit, um, and typically invest, take complaints from the public. Um, we need to look at oversight because there have been three versions of oversight um, in the city during the tenure that Bringleson was a part of the department. And so in order to be able to look at um, policing and the impacts and the systems related to policing as a whole, we believed it needed to be somebody that wouldn't also be having an uh, kind of an inward look at, look at, excuse me, we believed it needed to be a person that wouldn't be a party to part of the system that we're going to be looking at. Can you talk a little bit more about how many search firms or 
Sure. When we when we learned this news, I believe that it was um, um, that we needed to find someone with experience in investigations, um, given the length of time that Captain Bringelson was a part of the department and the views espoused um, on both video as an officer and then written. Um, I looked to experienced firms and in investigations in police. Um, and also believed it was it was important to find somebody that had ties over time um, to civil rights work, and and his experience with the Department of Justice was important to me as well. Um, I, w I have received recommendations of several, um, and had an, a primer, first conversation with this firm, and decided that this was the direction that we would take. Anyone who hasn't gotten a chance yet. So our, our hiring practices include, uh, but are not limited to, there's a lot of things that go into hiring a police officer. But we look at uh, all kinds of things, including asking for, for a personal history statement so that they can uh, answer a whole bunch of questions about their personal history and their life experience. Uh, we then utilize a background investigator to uh, look into the background and this is not just a cursory check not just a check to see if they've been arrested before this is a, a very in-depth process where we contact former tenant landlord uh, folks in that relationship uh, neighbors friends family members co-workers all of those things are examined in the background process and we ask questions about their uh, ideologies and, and their work ethic and, and a whole bunch of different things in that process. We also have them undergo a psychological evaluation with a, a mental health professional who's experienced in uh, dealing with these things and, and does this as a practice for uh, pre-hire type investigations or interviews. Uh, we have a, a number of things besides the typical stuff that you would think of. They have to pass a physical fitness requirement and, and those things. They take a written test. Um, they participate in an oral board interview to see if they um, to see if they are cut out for this type of work. So we, we look at a lot of different things in hiring a, a police officer. The one thing we can't necessarily maybe get into is inside their head to know what they think other than what they share with us in response to questions, psychological evaluations. Um, we have uh, other tools available, the polygraph, um, those types of things are all potentially part of the hiring process as well as as people go through so, uh, specialty selections for different teams as well as promotion, uh, they are then also subjected to further interviews and so forth. But it's a, it's a robust process. We will be obviously looking forward to any recommendations that we may receive as part of this investigation and the conclusion that we may need to uh, alter any practices that we currently have. All right, one more, and I think it goes to Don because he hasn't asked you. Sure. Um, I, I, the process to hire, the, I'll take the, the last part of your question first. We'll wait till the end. You know, we're taking things day by day, making decisions the best as, we can, as best we can with the information that we have. Right now, we know that we need to move into the direction of this investigation, and it's my expectation that this investigation with the report that comes at the end and the, rec and the re recommendations it makes to the department, um, to the city, will help guide us um, in hiring a chief moving forward. I don't think I can speak to union negotiations because we're in the middle of un union negotiations, but uh, sorry about that. All right, Scott. Uh, Corporal Holland, um, what's the sense among the rank and file that, um, that this is an isolated incident and whether mm -hmm. investigating the 
Uh, <clears throat> our members did feel that at first, and uh, we're trying now to just mend that and go forward. Um, we felt that some comments earlier put us all in the same bucket, and we don't. We went out against that because uh, we don't feel that that represents our union members. Uh, but since then, we've uh, tried to. Uh, we're working together to make sure that we're moving forward as a, in unity uh, in regards to this. It's the only way we can do it. Uh, we have to still get up and go work and deal with the public every single day. Uh, happy to do that. Um, but think, you know, certain things can make it difficult to do. Um, statements made or um, insinuations and things like that. So uh, that's why we're here uh, putting a face to the union uh, to know that our members, 240 strong, are out there working every day to, to get uh, to keep the trust that we have earned uh, in the community. So um, it does impact our, our, our members, but uh, since then, there's been great communication, and we're trying to stay on that, on that line. All right, last one. You know, I, I don't think we should ask any of these folks to speculate right now. We've talked about the fact that there's going to be an investigation, and I imagine that as the investigators get started, if that's an issue that comes up, that'll be dealt with. Um, all right. I'm going to let these guys get back to their um, day jobs. And if any of you need contact information for Steptoe, please let me know, because I've got it for you. <laughs>